Hello guys, welcome to Envision Prototypes and the Afterburner build. For those of you who are new to our channel or just tuning in, my name's Nick, and what I have here next to me is an open wheel, open concept, meaning it has no doors, funnel the roadster we're building for a client. Over the past few weeks, we've been mocking up the chassis and developing the wireframe buck, the structure right here. Now you might be looking at this, you've got the engine, you've got the suspension, but we've got no rad up front. Well, it's back here, and I'll show you how we set that up. And the reason I put it back there is I wanted to bring that front down nice and low, make this into a really sleek little roadster. You can see a lot of these running around on the street, uh, three-wheel versions. Well, we're utilizing the Envision Prototype signature chassis, hot rod chassis for this project. It's going to have four wheels, coilover front suspension. Those coilovers being put inbound or inside the chassis kind of take up some space in there. So another reason why I took and moved the rad back there. Today, hopefully, fingers crossed and toes, we can get this wire frame completed on the driver's side. We're not gonna bother with the passenger's side. Who needs that side? All that's important is the driver, right? No, I'm serious. All we're doing is creating the wire frame on the driver's side. Then we'll take and create all the panels for this side, create the mirror opposites from the template for the other side, and see how close we can get without using a wire frame buck. Over the years, I've built a number of bucks for various projects, complete bucks. Well, this is the first time I'm actually creating half the buck. It's a pretty straightforward shape in terms of the body. So we should be pretty successful in mirroring that for the other side. Let's see if we can do it. Let's go for a walk around this project. I can't call it a car yet because it doesn't have all the wheels or glass or body panels. And I'll show you what we went up to. So with this area here, we're not gonna have a grill. It's gonna be a solid metal panel, a hood, that comes up right up to the windshield. And we're not gonna do a typical hood. We're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, instead of an Audi, we're gonna do an Innie. So we're gonna have, you see here, this profile that comes down and in. And uh, to get, give it a different look, we have the room to go down and minimize that. So we're gonna basically accentuate these areas on the side. Now to get air into the engine compartment, there's gonna be a scoop from the bottom that forces air in when you're driving and escape out these scoops on the side. This post is a part of the firewall, but there'll be a space right in here to allow the air to get out. You'll see all that when we start shaping the sheet metal up. The windshield curvature still has to be established. Haven't gotten that far yet. I need to get the glass cut and we might do an episode on cutting windshields. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that. That there is an old donor seat out of Fiero, nice and narrow, nice and small. Perfect for a little hot rod. Fuel tank, custom built to work in this area. It works with all of our signature style frames, the platform, everything has been developed. This is a mule tank, basically what we use to mock things up. The filler, we're gonna have to relocate the neck and basically put in an area where we can get to it, but for now, that works. And what we have here are the cooler lines as well as the coolant lines, one here and one on the other side. And that's been fixed in place on rubber mounts at the bottom, as well as on the top right there. And to get air into that rad or through that rad, we're gonna have a scoop on the bottom of the car as well as right in through here. The air is gonna flow between this exterior panel and this web through here, right in through there and basically go through the rad. So it's gonna be a lot like the GT40, the newer style GT40. With the tail lights mounted on extension brackets, we still have to take and add fasteners to these pieces of structural box tubing that basically allow us to remove the tail lights from this area. Because as you can see, we develop brackets for the top there to bolt the tail light in. There's no room to actually back that tail, out, tail light out to get it out. We have to grind up these little welds and things. We're still in the process of. Now with these tail lights, they've actually been recessed inward to give it that scoop look from the back, like a jet engine look. You'll have the red glow inside. So we're gonna be working on duplicating another one of these for the passenger side over there. That was the first preliminary kind of outline what I wanted to kind of look like. And this is the more refined one. I like this one a lot better. So that shape is based on the lenses behind the green tape. So we'll get that bent up in a few minutes. Now in here, we're gonna actually let me see if we can get the piece of cardboard that I've been using as a mock-up template for the rear glass. We'll get that up there in a second. And down below here, we're going to have basically a section that's separate from the main body 
a cosmetic panel that covers up the rear differential, springs, sway bar, all that stuff underneath this area right here. So that's going to be the separate section that basically covers up the rear differential. That there is the glass for the project. Now we've had a number of people asking, what else do I use to create these bodies, to create the designs? Well, right here on the bench, we have all the conceptual drawings, different iterations that I've created, the dimensional drawings, scale drawings for this project. So in addition to the one on the wall, I'm referring to all these dimension drawings here, all the work that goes in that you guys don't really see, all the stuff behind the scenes for this project. It's not just slapping it together. There's a lot that goes into a project like this. This rear deck area, I can't really finish this off until we get that rear window in place. And that's gonna happen once we start working up into the upper section of the body. We're gonna start with the lower body panels, start forming those up, and then we're gonna get the glass mounted once we create the channels that sit basically off of those, off that rod there, and the one on this side, which isn't there. Now let's get this cardboard template that represents the glass up in place and I'll kind of show you how it's gonna play out on top. Now, I'm not sure if I can get up high enough to actually show you what this is gonna look like. Uh, that's a center line there, but I need to move it over just a little bit so it hooks onto that rod there on the left. I appreciate your patience. Okay, and I think it's gonna come back a little bit, but again, if I move it back too far to come into the shape of the tail lights, it's gonna fall off that rod there. And of course, it's sitting on a bit of an angle. So uh, let's see if I can get up high enough here. Uh, not really, but that's gonna be basically the, the shape of the rear window. It's gonna cover up uh, this whole rear section. And then we'll have a grill design in this area to allow that hot air to come out. This is a rear window out of a production car that we've turned 180 degrees. You see the shape. This is the way it, let's see if I can back up a little bit and show you the original shape. Now, I kind of just stuck it up there. That's the shape of the rear window. And the way it's set up now, it didn't flow with the roof line. So we took and flipped it 180 degrees and stuck it in place upside down and it fit almost perfectly. So uh, the tapers, the curvatures, more rounded at the top, this curvature through here fits the curvature of the top edge of our taillight area. You're not gonna see this silver band. That's all gonna be covered up with sheet metal. I'm gonna come down like that. Same thing here. And there'll be a grill, a mesh grill area here to allow the hot air to get out. Have your license plate. Anyway, this is gonna be taken and flipped upside down. Now, let's see if I can just balance it up there. I normally have a clamp up in the center, but because I'm just doing this one-handed, uh, we're off center and just to catch that rod. And that's gonna be basically the shape. Uh, should come back a bit more. Ah, there, it fell off. Yeah, too bad. Hmm. Okay. Let's see if I can get up high enough. It's off to one side, so you don't get the full effect. But that's gonna be the rear area. And in relation to the passenger, the head is gonna be here. That glass is gonna slide back a little bit further to mate up with those lights a bit better. This will all be concealed and all you'll probably see is the radiator at the back. Okay, so I think we can uh, get to work and start shaping up that tail light um, perimeter, get that mounted clean up what we need to clean up. We need to take and move this structural angle on the inside so we can start forming the sheet metal panels on the, out, on the inside of the cab as well as the outside. Um, I placed this here temporarily. Wasn't sure where that was gonna go, but now that we are gonna start with the sheet metal, this has to be moved on this side here, tie in with the box tubing temporarily. This wire frame is not staying within the shell. It's gonna be taken and removed. Once all the panels are shaped, all the flanges are created, We'll take, peel everything off, pull that wireframe buck off this chassis and reassemble everything just with sheet metal. A lot of times you see the Super Ligera style cars where they use tubing and they pin all their sheet metal to tubing. Well, in this case, we're building it like an OEM style vehicle where you have an inner metal structure out of sheet metal and all the exterior panels pinned to that. Oh, and by the way, 
this hood is going to pivot forward, basically open up like a clamshell, giving you full access to work on that engine, making it a lot easier. On our other roadsters, we had sides that were fixed in place, and being it's so narrow in the front, made it quite a challenge to get oil or whatever, you know, to do the maintenance on the car. So this one's going to be a lot more easy to get into. All right. Now, a lot of times when I cut half inch flat bar or 3 16 rod, I'll use a pair of bolt cutters. I'll just get that in there. And just chop it off like that. Saves on grinder wheels. And then we have to create an identical shape to this for the passenger side. So basically I line them up, find out where I need to start rolling and just using the vise and my hands, it's pretty straightforward. You can't really use a, a roller to get this shape because it's, it varies, you know? So it took, took a while to get the first one established, but now with the second one, it should be a little bit easier. Just set that up there and use two hands here. Now I've showed you in other videos when we created the motorcycle fender, that you can actually use basically anything, a rotor from a car. If you want to roll your rod around the rotor, it works out quite well. And you take as long as you need to, to create your shapes. Because the more accurate you can create the shape, the more accurate your sheet metal work is going to be. It's only half inch, so it doesn't take too much to bend it. And I'm just giving a nice gentle curve. When you're bending, you don't want to create flat spots. You want the curvature to be consistent. Let's line the two up. Uh, yeah. Now I've bent it a little too soon, so I'm going to unroll it a little bit. It's basically reverse direction and Okay, just about there. Now, we are a little bit long. I left a little bit extra because it's a lot easier to remove metal than add metal. Okay, that's coming in well there. And I've overbent a little bit, so I'm gonna unbend again. And this radius here is a little bit tight. Okay, a little bit soft. You can go back and forth like this for half an hour, but take as long as you need to. I said that before. Make sure it's spot on. So there we are, lined up at the bottom on the left-hand side, your left-hand side, my left-hand side, rolls all the way around the top. And let's sharpen this up a little bit here, right there. I don't bother putting marks at this stage because I'm constantly moving that radius around to match it. Okay, take an unbend once more. And there we have it, two identical pieces. Uh, this one here is a little bit long. So now we can put a mark, like so, and cut that off. And again, I'll use the bolt cutters for that. There we go. Now we can go get this in the car. Now here lies the challenge of
Okay, that's good. See? Just line them up and they are identical. Actually, this one's got a little flat spot. There. Now it's identical. Good. So that's good. Now here lies the challenge of tacking this to this rod while still having the tail light in place. Now these are just sacrificial tail lights, but you still want to maintain and not burn them up because you might use them for another project or whatever. So uh, I'll show you a little trick. Okay, 15 and a quarter. To protect the tail light, basically take a piece of sacrificial sheet metal, slip it in behind. Doesn't matter if you MIG, TIG, whatever. Uh, the heat is what kills your lens. And we're gonna get that in behind just like that. I'm gonna put a small tack on there. With the TIG, you don't get the sparks, but you still get the heat. The sheet metal basically acts as a heat shield. And you see, I put my hand on it. It's not hot at all. So that's what saves that tail light. Otherwise, you'd have to unbolt it, tack it, rebolt the tail light back in, check it. It gets to be quite um, a tedious process. So we'll do the same thing back in here. Slip this inside. Very carefully, like that. Now, once we have this located, we can take the tail light out and do final, the final welds and get that more permanent. There we go. That basically wraps up this back area here. We still need to take, like I mentioned, and locate the actual glass. So once we do that with the actual piece of glass, not this cardboard uh, warped, whatever you want to call this, then we can go ahead and run in these areas here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this angle iron is going to be in the way to create the interior sheet metal panels. So we'll take this uh, half inch square stock and just reposition the support on the outside and give us a, giving us a flat surface on the inside. So with that brace relocated on the inside, we can take and get these interior panels started, as well as the exterior panels. You wanna plan your buck in such a way that you don't have stuff interfering with you, with your progress as you're building. Uh, sometimes it's unavoidable, but if you can place your supports in such a way that, like I said, they don't get in the way, you're gonna be ahead of the game. Now, in regards to this roof line here, uh, you might be looking at it and saying, well, how in the heck are you gonna get into this car comfortably without you know, pretzelizing yourself? Well, once we have the windshield in place and the rear glass in place, uh, in such a way we can take them out so we're not working with glass in place, uh, we're gonna take and open this roof up, take the section of rod out, go in and around, create an opening so you can basically step up out of the vehicle and step out or to get in, step in, sit down. Uh, this is not gonna be very comfortable, but we need that there for continuity from front to back. Uh, once we've got that back area established, then this can come out. So everything has a process. You gotta have patience, a lot of patience when you're building a vehicle like this. And um, that's it. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for all the support. And tune in next time when we start the sheet metal work.